Hey everyone, my name is Taj and I'm going to take you through this drawing I did um, just so you can see my process and uh, different techniques that I use. Um, I like using a lot of mixed media so hopefully you get to try something new. Um, you can see here I already have a sketch in here with a couple speech bubbles. It says I feel afraid of the world out there as I'm sure a lot of people do right now. Um, and I did a little wash with some watercolor just to fill out the background um, and picked a color of pen that kind of fits with it and I'm just filling in the space with some patterning. Um, you can probably tell I have this sped up for you. This usually takes a long time to do, but uh, it's, it's kind of nice and meditative for me, so um, I enjoy doing this. Um, if that's not something you like, you can always pick a pattern that's a little easier to do. And so skipped ahead here, I filled out kind of a cloud shape of pattern and I felt like that was probably enough. So now I'm just sketching in the drawing a little bit more so I can see what's going on. And yeah, and just keep adding as you go. Um, and now I feel like I can start filling in the drawing um, just so it pops out a little more. And another skip ahead here, I added some color to the face, and now I'm getting into some collage. So you'll notice that the paper I'm using um, are kind of post-it notes and uh, note paper with lots of, um, yeah, little notes and reminders that I have for myself. I think there's a grocery list in there. Um, and yeah, I mean, you don't have to use paper that's been written on if you don't like it. Um, I just like to make things really visually dense and a little difficult to see. <laughs> um, but you, yeah, I, other recommendations are um, maybe wrapping paper, you can use newspaper, old newspaper, um, origami paper is really great. You can also find patterned origami paper, which is always really fun. Um, or any kind of colored construction paper is great. And so you notice I picked up, oh, my big head in the way, sorry. Um, you'll notice that I picked out some blues to kind of contrast with the pink that I have going on. Um, so it's nice too to kind of find papers that already have a color that um, you can just kind of place on top of your image and kind of make a color scheme for you. And so another skip ahead here and you'll notice that the way I cut the pieces um, I was trying to follow the shape of the pattern cloud that I had drawn initially. Um, and if you don't have like a, a pattern shape at the beginning, you know, I, I think you can follow any shape that you like and um, just try to make it cohesive with what you have below in some way. And, uh, repeating the pattern from before over top and now going into the collage pieces. Um, just to integrate the image a bit more so it's not so jarring and uh, I've also added some pink figures in and over top. And now I'm going in again with some more paper and you'll see like I'll kind of before I make a decision I'll hold the paper up and uh, I find it's useful to have smaller pieces of paper um, that way you can you know visualize a bit better how things might look once you cut them. Um, yeah, and so just trying to integrate the pinks and the blues a bit more here, I think. And break up the, the wavy lines that were happening. Um, here I'm using a glue stick for this image, but I'm also a really big fan of rice glue. You can um, apply it with a brush and water it down and it just helps get things a bit more detailed but um, for this kind of size and material uh, I think a regular glue stick is totally fine. Um, I also want to shout out my high school teacher Barbara Sunday right now for um, one of the key things she would always repeat in art class was to touch all edges of the paper and uh, that's kind of stuck with me today. And I mean, this isn't always true, but um, I think definitely for my more maximalist approach, it works really well to just 
remember to keep going and make the most use of the space you have. Um, and here, so now I'm, I'm blocking in the figures that I had drawn in before. Um, the one tricky part of working like this is that when you do have illustrative parts that you add in um, partway through, it can be really hard to make them stand out. So I really like using this poster paint because it has really high coverage, but um, it's still water, uh, like you can dilute it with water. Um, so now I'm just trying to go in with darker colors, um, get the negative space blocked out so we can really see a bit more of the silhouettes that I've drawn in earlier. And I think the key thing to my process right now with these kind of drawings is to just um, take it slow and work bit by bit um, and figure things out as they go. Um, and if you need to step away and take a look at your drawing, um, you know, the next day or even a week later before you can figure out what needs to be done to make it work, that's totally fine. Um, I think this drawing I did over the course of three, three or four days maybe? So yeah, take your time and keep it going. And here I'm, yeah, I just filled in the letters so you can actually <laughs> read them better and still going in with some more patterning just to fill up this white space. Yeah, and um, hmm, looking at this drawing again now, uh, one thing I could have done differently that might have given the image a bit more depth is if I had made that first wash of color fill more of the fill more of the drawing. Um, but I th I think it turned out okay. It, it is what it is. <laughs> so now I'm yeah I'm just going in to show you a bit closer how parts of it look. Um, I definitely don't think this drawing is finished. It could it could have some more, but for now, I think this is okay. So yeah, thank you for joining me, and uh, I hope you learn something or at least um, feel motivated to try something new.